Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Cassandra and I am continuing my Zodiac Yoga series. Today's practice is our Libra Yoga Flow. This is one I've personally been excited to do just because Libra is my sun sign, so I do have a nice personal connection to this one. So Libra is known as the mediator, the peacemaker. When we think about Libra being a cardinal air sign and the archetype of the lady of balance or the lord of balance, we often think of Libra as being the energy and the zodiac sign that can see both sides to any situation. And while that is definitely true, what I think is even more accurate about the air sign of Libra is that not only can you see both sides of any situation, but you can actually zoom out even further and see a much greater perspective where you realize that there are more than just these two sides. There are actually so many other options. The options are limitless. So it's kind of like this erasure of the boundaries of the binary of this or that. This is what makes Libra a phenomenal mediator and also a great peacemaker. Libra is very much motivated through justice and equality. So because they're able to think creatively and come up with new solutions and to speak up, they're able to really fight for the underdog and to really use their clear communications, maybe as lawyers or as social workers or teachers, to really help others. They're very much motivated by harmony, so wanting to create a harmonious life for themselves personally, but also wanting to see harmony and beauty out in the world. Balance is super important, whether that's finding balance within their own lives, so balance between their work life, their relationships, their family, their own personal fulfillment. Really important that they try to find equality between all of those spheres, and they also are trying to find balance in the world outside of them. So really can get upset when things are out of balance, maybe can get easily overwhelmed. I know that's something that I personally resonate with quite a bit. That's where a lot of my anxiety and stress comes from. And Libra is also associated and linked with Venus, which is all about beauty. So this is about wanting to create a beauty through balance and harmony, and also just this desire to acknowledge the beauty around us. So of course I'm biased, but it is a really nice sign, one that I quite connect to, and we're gonna work with those energies today. So we're gonna do a balancing pose yoga flow, because of course Libra is all about balance, and we're really going to try to cultivate these themes of balance, harmony, and beauty within ourselves through our practice. So a lot of balancing poses, and a lot of hamstring stretches as well. This is why I have a strap beside me. I'm gonna use the strap in the beginning of the class with some hamstring stretches. I'm very sore because of a, yo uh, a workout that I did yesterday. So you might not need a strap. You can definitely just use your hands. So don't worry if you don't have one close by. Before we lower down, let's go over our three affirmations to connect with the energy and themes of Libra. The first one is, my relationships are in harmony. I easily balance work and play. I see beauty all around me. So let's begin lying down on our backs. And if you have your strap, you can bring it with you. And start with your legs out, kind of like in your Shavasana corpse pose. Just take a few deep breaths here. So when you think of this air sign, this diplomat, peacemaker, advocate, teacher, lover of beauty, quick thinker, clear communicator, what is it that you connect with the most when you think of Libra? My relationships are in harmony. I easily balance work and play. I see beauty all around me. And 
And we'll take our first pose here. So we're gonna take a leg stretch, either grabbing a hold of the back of your right thigh or right shin, or you can loop the strap around the ball of your right foot as you extend it up. And I'm just gonna keep my arms relaxed beside me. You can definitely keep a bit of a bend into your right knee. Think of flexing through your foot and reaching out through that right heel. So you can use this flow to ask yourself what kind of balance you need to cultivate in your life or what kind of justice and equality are you seeking either for yourself or for others. And what is the beauty in your life that you really want to honor? And you can just drop your right leg over to the side. So changing that leg stretch. And again, you can maybe just keep your hand over on your shin or on your thigh if you're not using a strap. Just taking a few breaths here. Keep lengthening out of your left leg and pushing down into your left hip and left shoulder so that you're not rolling over onto one side. I find that when I stretch out my hamstrings, it's easier to balance in standing balancing poses, which is why we're gonna be doing quite a few of them in this class. And coming all the way back up through to center, you can bend into your right knee, bring your left leg in. We're gonna do a reclined Gomukhasana pose or reclined shoelace pose. So my right thigh is crossing over the top of my left. I'm bending into both knees and you can grab a hold of your feet as you pull your thighs in towards your belly. So just stretching out through our outer hips into our glutes a little. Try to keep your head and shoulders relaxed on the mat. My relationships are in harmony. I easily balance work and play. I see beauty all around me. And let's release. And we're going to do our leg stretch over on the second side. So straighten your right leg to the mat and either hold on to the back of your left leg or hoop your foot inside that strap. And try to keep your ankle and your knee directly over the top of your left hip, flexing into the foot, reaching out into your heel. Remember, you can definitely bend into your knee a little here. Try to even find a sense of balance through your breath so that your inhales are just as long as your exhales. You're not favoring one over the other. And we can open that leg out to the side. So the left leg goes over to the left. Push down into your right heel, your right hip, and your right shoulder. So there is a little bit of core strength and engagement required here. And we'll come all the way back up through to center and you can get rid of the strap. We won't need it anymore. Coming into our reclined cow face pose. So I'm wrapping my left thigh over the right one, flexing through the feet. And I'm using my hands to pull on my feet to drag them down. And I'm reaching my feet and ankles away from one another as I'm pulling my thighs closer towards the chest. And let's release, unwrap, and you can rock up and down, coming into our tabletop pose onto hands and knees. Placing palms under your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. So we're gonna work on balance a little bit more here. Find a solid foundation through both hands, and you can step your right foot back, roll to the inner edge of that right foot, and bring your right hand to your thigh or up to your hip. 
you're going to lift that right leg off the mat and now if you'd like you're going to add a bind so really challenging your balance here as you reach back and grab a hold of your right foot with your right hand balancing on your left hand and your left shin try to get a nice quad stretch here as you kick the foot into the palm opening up through the heart and either stay here or if you'd like the real challenge we're going to do a variation of tiger pose but this one we're keeping same hand and same foot holding on to each other so imagine you're trying to face and square up to the mat so come back as if you were doing tabletop pose, but it's a two-legged table with your bind here. So I'm keeping my foot into my right hand, kicking it out. Usually when we do tiger pose, it's opposite hand and foot, but this one we're doing right side only. One more big deep breath, and regardless of where you were, we meet in low lunge on Janiyasana. So right foot steps forward to the top of the mat. My right knee is over my ankle. I'm gonna push down into the ground in order to lift on up. Shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears. Press your hips forward and down. Deep belly breaths. So especially with the air sign, I want you to feel connected to the power of your breath. In and out through your nose. My relationships are in harmony. And let's bring our fingertips down towards the mat. You're going to step back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Right foot steps back to the left. So I'm not going to be doing any vinyasas in this class. If you would like to do some at home, of course, you're welcome to. So right now, you'd be welcome to do a little flow going from plank to chaturanga, upward dog and downward dog. I'm just going to hold my downward facing dog, focusing on lengthening my arms, reaching my chest back, pushing down through my heels, drawing the lower belly in. I easily balance work and play. I see beauty all around me. Tabletop pose, lower your knees back down and let's find that little sequence on the second side. So step the left foot back, roll to the inner edge of that left foot and bring your left hand over to your hip. We're gonna lift that left leg up and then find your bind from here. So as you bend into your left knee, grab a hold of your foot and start to kick and push the foot into the palm, getting a nice stretch through that shoulder, through your quads. And now here's the tricky part. We're going to try to do a variation of tiger pose. Keep the hold of your left foot and your left hand and see if you can bring your chest and your belly to now be parallel to the ground as if you were doing tabletop pose. And keep trying to lift that left thigh up even higher. And we all meet in our low lunge on Janiyasana, left foot forward to the top of the mat. Your feet should be about hip width distance apart or so before you rise on up. Try to lift out of your lower back so that you're not rounding and contracting too much here or pinching through that low back. And we'll find downward facing dog frame the front foot with your hands tuck the back toes under and left foot moves back optional to take a vinyasa or just hang out in your downward dog like what i'm doing here and see if you can create a little bit more space so in every pose we're asking ourselves how can i create a little bit more harmony within my body here How can you find a little bit more balance? And from our downward dog, let's reach our right leg up to the sky. You can bend your right knee, open up your hip, get a big stretch. And we're gonna step the right foot forward in between the hands to the top of the mat. Keep your back knee lifted here. So a lunge, I'm just up onto my fingertips. And we're gonna really start to work on our balance. Engaging through your strengths, you're going to bring your knees together at the top of the mat, hovering the left foot off the floor. So my knees are bent 
and I'm tapping my left knee to my right one. With control, keep your gaze steady and bring one and then both hands to your heart and rise all the way up, bringing your left knee up with you. You're gonna feel the burn through your left glutes into your quads. Option to stay here or add a twist. Right hand moves to your left knee and your left arm will open up to the side. Come all the way back through to center, standing pigeon pose. You're gonna cross that left ankle over the top of your right knee, almost lost my balance there. Bend into your right knee as you sink your hips down, but also back and reach your chest forward. Shoulders are away from your ears. So really don't worry if you wobble and if you fall out of it. Perfectly fine. Just one more breath here. And we're gonna step out into our warrior one. So your left foot will go towards the back of the mat at about a 45 degree angle. Bend generously into that front knee and reach your arms up. Either keeping the arms parallel here, palms facing towards one another, or adding a little back bend by bringing your palms together and shifting your gaze up to your thumbs. Keep sinking your hips down and come back to neutral. Straighten your front leg, bring that back foot in a couple inches and we'll find our pyramid pose. So leaning your chest forward, trying to keep your hips as squared as much as possible and then maybe bringing your hands down. You can hold on to your shin or fingertips come down to the floor. And you can definitely bend into your right knee here. Don't worry about how low you're getting into the pose. <sighs> My relationships are in harmony. I easily balance work and play. I see beauty all around me. And let's find our standing splits. You're just gonna bend into that front knee, walk your hands out in front of you, and we're really just here to transition. See if you can kick that left leg up as high as it'll go before lowering to ragdoll pose, bend into your knees, feet are a little more than hip width distance apart, grab a hold of your elbows and maybe sway a little side to side. Release your hands down to the mat, bend your knees generously and push into your heels to roll all the way up inch by inch, mountain pose, Tadasana. Let's take one last standing balancing pose here on this side before we go and repeat the flow to the other one. We're gonna do Garudasana, your eagle pose. So bending into your knees, you're gonna wrap your left thigh over the right, either once or twice. And with your elbows bent in front of you, you're gonna wrap your left arm under the right, also either once or twice at the wrists. Pull that energy in through the midline, keep your focus, keep your gaze. Can you change your perspective on this pose? Finding more harmony in it. And release, reach your arms wide, inhale, exhale, fold. You're welcome to take a vinyasa. I'm just gonna step back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Creating a little bit more space. Now we'll move to the second side. Left leg rises, bend your knee, open up your hip and find your lunge, so left foot steps forward. Keep your back knee lifted off the mat, just work on sinking your hips down, kind of like rolling your shoulders back so there's still an opening through your chest. And now we're gonna bring both knees together to touch, standing on our left leg. You can point those back toes. And then keep your gaze steady. You're gonna bring one hand to your heart and then the other, 
push into your left foot to come all the way up to stand, bringing that right knee up with you. You can add your twist from here, left hand reaches for your right knee, right arm extends to the back of your mat. So hips face forward, your shoulders and chest are facing towards the long edge of your mat. Grow a little taller through the pose. Into your standing pigeon, you're gonna cross your right ankle over the top of that left knee. Hands at your heart, Anjali Mudra. Bend into that supporting leg. Send your hips back. Lean your chest forward. Find balance through your breath. Beauty in the pose. Coming to Virabhadrasana one, your warrior one. Right foot steps towards the back of the mat. 45 degree angle here and you're bending generously into that left knee, either just reaching your arms up or bringing your palms together to touch and looking up as if looking past your thumbs. Keep your hips grounded while at the same time lifting up even taller. Into your pyramid pose, straighten the front leg, hands to your hips. I'm gonna narrow my stance a little bit, so bringing that back foot in, squaring the hips forward before tilting and folding down. Try to relax your neck, relax your head. <sighs> and let's transition into our standing split so you can bend into that front knee. So bending into the left knee, walk your hands out in front of you and reach that right leg up to the sky. Just to transition, ragdoll pose, feet are about hip width distance apart, maybe a little wider. Bend your knees as much as you'd like as you fold your belly over your thighs, maybe rock a little side to side. <sighs> And let's roll all the way up, inch by inch. Push your heels into the mat, lifting up. Garudasana, eagle pose on the second side. So this time you're standing on your left leg. You're gonna wrap your right leg over that left one, maybe looping the toes behind. Right arm goes under the left. Push your forearms in towards one another. Hug everything through the midline. Both knees should be bent. Pull your navel back, press your shoulders down. And release, circle the arms wide, inhale. Exhale, fold forward, either downward dog, which is what I'm gonna do, or you can take a little float if you'd like. This is our last downward facing dog. And come down to take a seat. Let's find a straddle forward fold so you can open your legs out wide. And we're just gonna fold directly into the center. Definitely you can bend your knees if you'd like. I'm making this a passive, almost yin style forward fold. So I'm letting my spine round and I'm letting gravity do the work for me. So how do you best connect to the themes of Libra, of being the mediator, the peacemaker, the justice seeker, the harmonizer and beauty lover, my relationships are in harmony. I easily balance work and play. I see beauty all around me.
Uh, walk your hands in so you can sit on up and just sit in any cross-legged position that is comfortable to you. We'll just do a quick little twist, left hand to your right knee, open to the right. And switching sides, right hand to your left knee, left hand back as you twist left. Coming back through to center, we're going to take a few rounds, five rounds of alternate nostril breath, Nadi Shodana. This is a balancing breath, working with uh, the polarity in the body and polarity through the mind. Also a really great way to harmonize the nervous system. So with your right hand, you can bend your index and middle finger. And we're going to block the right nostril with our thumb, starting the inhale through the left. And then you're going to block off the left nostril and exhale out the right. You then inhale through the right, seal it and exhale. And the key here is to have the inhales and the exhales be just as long. So I'm gonna count to five for each. That would be one round when we inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So we're gonna do that five times together. I'll guide you through the first one and then you can do it on your own. So whenever you're ready, exhale fully, Seal off the right nostril and we begin. Inhale one, two, three, four, five. Exhale right one, two, three, four, five. Inhale right one, two, three, four, five. Exhale left one, two, three, four, five. Four more. Three more. Two more. Last round. And come back to a neutral breath. And we'll lower down into Shavasana, our final resting pose. Close your eyes, take up some space. And really feel the effects of your practice and of that breathing technique. We'll be here about three minutes or so. And one last time, let's internally repeat these affirmations to connect with the zodiac sign of Libra. My relationships are in harmony. I easily balance work and play. I see beauty all around me.
Begin to breathe a little bit deeper, inviting gentle movement back into your body as we wake up from this resting pose, maybe stretching your arms up overhead. And we'll turn to one side so we can ease ourselves up into a seated pose. Closing your eyes, hands come together at the front of the heart. Taking a moment to really show yourself gratitude. And let's close by chanting Om one time. Inhale to chant, breathe in. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing this Libra yoga flow with me. I would love to know what you thought of this practice and these themes. Leave me a comment before you go. I have a lot of other zodiac flows by now, so you can check those out. Please subscribe, and hopefully we'll be practicing again together very soon.